how many arabian fragrances is too many arabian fragrances for one collection the answer is there is no limit obviously and i'm taking that shit to heart and i've gone shopping and exploring with brands that i don't have a lot of fragrances from in today's video i'm going to share seven fragrances that i've recently picked up added to my collection from arabian fragrance houses that i don't have much experience with and i was pleasantly surprised by the quality the affordability and the excitement that it just drummed up inside of me and i want to share that excitement with you so if you want to explore some arabian fragrances with me today stick around and let's get into it show me what you got on me i'm gonna make it work more for this Hi, I'm Janique and I love me an Arabian fragrance and I do love a haul as well. In today's video, we're bringing both of those two things together. Now, most of the Arabian fragrances in my collection come from a handful of brands like Latafa, Armoff, Maison Alhambra. And in today's video, I want to share some other brands that I've been picking up and exploring. Now, not everything I'm going to share today is fire. Some shit is mid, but there were no real fails among the bunch, which I think is noteworthy. Now, if you like this kind of video you love a perfumey conversation don't forget to subscribe so that youtube knows that they should recommend my videos to you i also did a latafa haul in my last video so if you haven't checked that out i will link it so you can go explore that video after you're done with this one now let's get into the fragrances that i picked up from places like ardal zafran rosasi swiss arabia and Codlage, among others and i'm gonna let you know what they gave and if any of them are really worth the money that i paid for them now Let's get into it. I've been hearing a lot about Cadlage and how their fragrances are fucking phenomenal and I've been meaning to check them out and I figured I would start here boom with Harim Al Sultan now this fragrance went viral on TikTok about a year ago maybe six months ago people talking about specifically that this smells like a beautiful woman with her titties out like literally that's how they described it and I thought to myself what kind of orgiastic fees is this giving and I want to try it now after testing this and this is a perfume oil I will open this baby up it's a perfume oil it is far more pretty and subtle than i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be loud and overly sweet i'm not i'm not criticizing like i love all of that as well but i thought that is what this would give but i would say on the face of it this is mostly jasmine and peony and a very soft mild jasmine with a peony that is softening the edges of the fragrance and making it really romantic and airy and almost ethereal very very fantasy like now when i picked this up in the box they gave me this this for the sample to try out and this is hold on it's a 20 mil sample excuse me <laughs> that's a, it's a decent amount of a sample i will take that and i will say i for the edp this has a dose of citrus in the opening that makes it feel really bright and fresh and pretty and the fruit in this is coming through a lot heavier so i will say in the oil it has a really beautiful sandalwood note especially as you breathe it in even heavier that makes this really nice and comforting feels a little bit more grown this just feels like more of a fun time like you're going out to a party it's a little bit sweeter it's a little bit airier it's a little bit more citrus really fun and exciting fragrance so if they give us more bottles this opulent and beautiful i won't be able to resist y'all more than anything though i'm picking up a full size of this because this fragrance is so fire yes so now we're going to get on to the two Rasasi fragrances that I picked up. And the first one is Kasamat Ebhar. No, I didn't know what to expect. I think from the notes, vanilla, tonka bean, patchouli, oris, damask rose. It seemed like a very sort of straightforward kind of fragrance. What it smells like to me, however, is not really like an obvious fruity floral. It smells like a fruity floral with a very heavy sandalwood in the base. Once you get into the mid of this fragrance, that orris root with that mild powderiness and that earthiness is really, really pretty. But I think most of the work here is being done what smells like to me like Santal and Musk with all of the florals and all the 
fruit just sort of retreating behind it and playing a secondary position this feels very grown and sophisticated and not at all what i expected i really thought this was going to be your very standard fruity floral but they took a very like deft hand in creating this fragrance making it feel very very sophisticated very pretty also the bottle is really nice i don't know it's really heavy it's really substantial it feels really luxe in my hand i was just not expecting something this wonderfully refined from Rosasi. very very impressed with this fragrance this is the kind of thing i would wear to work on a regular basis feeling very high powered feeling really put together i think this is really lovely if you like a less sweet floral sandalwood type of fragrance this is really lovely and i do think this was a nice just really introduction to Rosasi because they very much impressed me with this one now let's talk about Hawass this is Hawass do you see how much is gone from Hawass I have not used that much this cap does not fit right and because of that this fragrance has been evaporating since i got it i don't know if it's a malfunction that everybody is experiencing if you have hawas and you have been having a bottle malfunction please let me know down in the comment section but as it stands this has been evaporating like crazy so what i've had to do is i've taken a zara cover and it fits and that has been helping with the evaporating but it's not a cute look y'all and it's a little bit disappointing because the juice in here does smell good i just wish the bottle would cooperate i want to even put the gold cap on because it is never on this bottle right now because i don't want to lose any more juice because excuse me even if it's inexpensive i don't want to waste my money that's just fyi so let's get into what this actually smells like the first thing is that it is a very powdery fragrance not like aggressively powdery to the point where it is off-putting because sometimes powdery fragrances do, do that to me it is an iris fragrance and it's getting that heavy dose of iris powderiness that we know and love right that is the main thing in this fragrance right it is powdery iris green jasmine very heavy dirty patchouli and a little bit of vetiver to make it feel a little smoky this feels like an incredibly sexy fragrance for someone who is very very confident it does have some sweetness from some fruit but they're all playing a secondary position to a lot of that greenness and that powderiness and that vetiver this feels very grown if it's a little dark if it's a little mysterious it is a, a very lovely one if you like that kind of composition i even think the powderiness in here is warranted the level of it because i think the fragrance fragrance would be too severe if it was heavy dirty patchouli and a whole bunch of vetiver and that was all that was it i think the iris in here really lightens it and makes the fragrance feel like va va voom where i'm flirty but i'm also like a tomcat like it's giving both at the same time which i think makes this fragrance kind of special i don't have a lot of fragrances with this kind of note structure this kind of combination so i really appreciate having this outside of the fact that the bottle wants to play with me so one of my favorite arabian fragrances from last year was from Ardal zafran and it was bin Turan. and ever since then i've been meaning to check out more fragrances from this house however there are so many where do you even start if you have some Ardal zafran favorites leave it down in the comment section and let me know because i want to check out more from them same with rosasi if you have some rosasi faves leave those names down in the comment section because i want to explore further but i decided to start off with these two from Ardal's Afrons because the ratings were fantastic and this is Shams Al Emrat and this is Shams Al Emrat Kasusi. I'm going to start off with this one because it's their original and then get into this one after. My first try of Shams Al Emrat, I thought it's fine. There's nothing special about it. But after wearing it a few times, that quickly changed for me. And this fragrance has heavily, heavily grown on me. So what is this fragrance? It's basically a fluffy, beautiful marshmallow fragrance. It is very sweet, powdery vanilla with sugar on top. It is a very cozy fragrance. And none of the notes prepared me for that shit because it says things like spices and green apple and rose. And so I thought I was getting a spicy rose apple fragrance, basically. And that is not this. I don't know where they get those notes from. I don't smell any of those things. I smell sweet vanilla with sugar on top. And the longer you are wearing it, the longer it dries down, it becomes more and more marshmallowy. I was wearing this earlier today. And I was just 
loving the smell of it on my skin now you need to forgive it for the first like 20 seconds it low-key smells like acetone so a little bit like it smells a little bit aggressive in the alcoholness of it all but once that passes and the fragrance is sitting a bit and it warms up on your skin it becomes cozier and cozier now a lot of the reviews of this fragrance i feel like they said something like I don't know something more interesting than this and i want to say this is not interesting i think this is very very pretty and this is a scent profile that i gravitate toward and i absolutely love but i feel like most of the reviews i saw were talking about those notes and how they came through i don't know why but they're not coming through on my skin it gets more powdery more marshmallowy as the fragrance goes and i'm not mad at that so if you love a very sweet marshmallow adjacent fragrance on the cheap cheap then this is a fantastic option it's not even like some special kind of marshmallow it's just fucking marshmallow and i don't need it to be more than that honestly y'all i just went to fragrantica to look at what people said shams el amarat smelled like and they were right <laughs> i should have looked the this reminds me of is literally soft from our hab and pink sugar that's what it reminds people of and lira yeah yeah exactly it's a marshmallowy candy sweet fragrance and it smells really really pretty so yeah they were right pink sugar they were right have you subscribed yet are you being stingy with a like don't do that don't be that person like the video subscribe come back for more shit we got more fragrance to talk about it's just like an intermission or whatever the first time I did a full day wear of Kasusi, I thought it was better than the original Shams al Amra just because this one had a lot more going on, a lot more interest. There is a fruity green apple. There is some rose in here. There is oud. There is patchouli. Now, I know that there is a real popularity right now of a combination of rose and oud together. So imagine that combination with some green apple, so some sweetness and some tartness with some greener patchouli. They're all working in this fragrance. And I thought this is gonna be a more interesting experience, a more fun ride. This is gonna be the nighttime version of the previous daytime fragrance. And that is what it is. But I found that as the night went on and that oud and that patchouli came through heavier and heavier, I wanted to box it off of masking no i don't think this is a bad fragrance i think this is really nice but i know i find oud challenging and occasionally they tops a little bit in a fragrance i can barely tell it's oud it could pass as vetiver i don't fucking know and it is my vibe in this the oud is ooding it's not an aggressive or a nasty oud but like it's like mayo for me you could just tops a little bit in there and i probably taste it and hate it you know because it's just not for me and the oud in here is just a little bit heavier than i would like now i'm gonna give this a few more tries to see if i can get into it but this might have to be gifted to somebody i find the oud a little bit distracting especially after all of that rose is gone all of that apple is gone and all that's left on my skin is more fucking oud and patchouli like that's not a bad thing for some people they love that shit they love the smell the earthiness the heavy wood for me i find it a little bit like not quite nauseating just i don't want to smell like that you know what i mean and so ultimately i think this is a pretty fragrance for somebody else if you're a rose oud girly who likes a little bit of sweetness and you don't mind a patchouli note then this might be a really affordable way to get exactly that for me on the other hand i think this will take some time to grow on me if it ever grows let's talk about swiss arabian's wild spirit why did i buy this fragrance i don't fucking know i really literally don't know because i don't remember seeing anything or any review about wild spirit i really think i just picked this up blind just blind and really huh i like it i really really like it this is a green tuberose maybe that's what i saw somebody said green tuberose and i ran my ass to go buy this fragrance because i love me a tuberose fragrance it reminds me a little bit of Mariah Carey Forever, which is another green tuberose, or Hiram Green's Moon Bloom, another green tuberose, or Tuberosa from Miss Honey, another green tuberose. Do you see how I remember these green tuberoses? Because they're fire and I love them. And there aren't that many out there because most of the tuberose fragrances, in order to be appealing to most people who can't fucking stand tuberose, it's like a bubblegum kind of tuberose smell. This is not that. We have that thick, creamy tuberose texture that we all know and love. It is fantastic. And there is a heavy, heavy dose of green notes. Now I've tried to figure out the green notes in this. 
It is not cut grass green. It's not that sharp. It's not that fresh. It doesn't smell as outdoorsy as that. It smells almost herbal, but greener than that. You know what it reminded me of when I was trying this? Mint. The smell of mint in your hand. And then there is some orris root here to soften up the churros to not make it feel as wintry and as heavy. Can a fragrance feel shy? This fragrance feels shy. Like it's not trying to assert itself very much, much because even the greenness in here is pulled back into like the nicest version of green that you can give. Even the tuberose in here has been lightened up with orris, so it's the nicest version of tuberose we can get. This is a sis who plays well with others, right? This is a sis who is trying to be nice to everybody. This is a team player kind of fragrance. And I find this to be very pretty, kind of understated, a really like lovely way to approach a tuberose fragrance in a way that I don't currently have in my collection. And I have me a lot of tuberose fragrances. This is Paris Corners Rificat. And this is a dupe of Yves Saint Laurent's YSL's Baby Cat, the very viral fragrance that I talked about in my Sexy Rich video where I was sampling fragrances and I fell in love with baby cat hard and it's usually hard to get when you can find it it's crazy expensive and I had heard I had heard this was a very good dupe of that fragrance and they were more fucking bright now there are a couple of differences between this and baby cat that I think are noteworthy number one the black pepper in this fragrance is heavy as a motherfucker it is going for like 30 minutes like why so heavy on the black pepper Paris corner. Was that necessary? I feel like it was not. So in the original baby cat, there's like a hopes of black pepper that goes away after five to 10 minutes. In this, it sticks around for about a 30 minute like time span. The second change they make in this fragrance is they add a heavier dose of cedar. No, in Baby Cat, it has suede, it has cedar. They rely more heavily on suede. So the base of the fragrance, even though it feels substantial, it is slightly softer than this. This feels very hard, which I think makes it feel slightly more masculine than Baby Cat itself. I mean, not in a bad way. I think women can wear it. I plan to wear the fuck out of this, period. Like, that's what's going to happen. However... The cedar in this is heavy and there is little or no suede in here. Like, on top of that, it is a hair less sweet than the original. The other one, YSL's Baby Cat feels like a party. It just does. I feel good when I wear it. I want to go out. I want to go dancing. I want to go for a bourbon at a cigar bar. Like that is the vibe of that fragrance. It feels like a night out making bad decisions. It is great, right? This feels a little bit more serious. This feels like a little bit more severe in a lot of ways, but it takes a lot of what is great about baby cat and it replicates that now could i just layer this with something sweet and vanillic a little marshmallowy maybe layer it with shams alamorat together and make this a little bit more of a party fragrance i could i could i'm already strategizing up in this bitch and i'm excited but just know if you are a baby cat fan if you love a spicy fragrance with a cedar some vanilla all together with some pepper and that is your vibe this does a great 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 job of replicating baby cat at a fraction a fucking fraction of the price i did good y'all i picked up some lovely fragrances this time around exploring some fragrance houses that i didn't have a ton of experience and although i think i'm most excited about the cartilage fragrance as well as rificat because both of those are so novel and they're going to give me something i don't already have the fragrances that i think are going to get the most wear out of me are probably shams al amrat with that marshmallowy vanilla as well as rosace's ebhar because there's something about a warm sandalwood fragrance in winter that just works, especially on the days when you don't want to be loud with your fragrance. You just want something a little bit more understated, a little bit more refined. I'm very happy with exploring these houses and they have shown me that they are worth further exploration. Now, if you enjoyed this video, check out my last fragrance haul video where I picked up a bunch of perfumes from Latafa because I stay buying from Latafa. They usually do right by me and I throw my money at them. And if you enjoyed this video, check out more from me. You should subscribe subscribe keep coming back for more because i'm gonna keep giving because you deserve it again i'm janique out here buying up all the arabian fragrances and telling you about it like we're besties or whatever so come back for the next one i'll see you soon 
Bye, y'all. Mama, love is on the line, and it's up to ya. You ain't gotta worry about me playing games. I want you just as bad as you want me. You already talking with your energy. In the back of my mind, fantasize about you and me.